Hello from Sydney Harbour, where EY are about to launch a second issues paper as part of their independent review into the introduction of objective carcass measurement technology and its application in the red meat processing industry. In February of this year, AMPC and AMIC appointed EY to undertake this independent review which will evaluate all strategic, technical, financial, commercial, operational, governance and implementation aspects of Project 150. Project 150 is MLA's plan, announced in November last year, to pursue a 150 million industry-wide installation of objective carcass measurement technology, underpinned by DEXA, to all Osmeet accredited plants by 2020. We commissioned this independent review because we have a responsibility to our members to ensure there is a balanced, fact-based approach to significant investments made on their behalf and that those investments are thoroughly evaluated and deliver commercial benefits to the industry. This review process and the transparency involved will become a gold standard for industry innovation and disruption. It will be a precursor to the open innovative networks where the full financial clout of the largest trade exposed manufacturing sector can be brought to bear on those issues and risks that threaten the long term sustainability of the industry. Many vested interests are threatened by these significant changes which are made by the processing sector. On the 24th of March EY published its first issues paper and today we will hear from Andrew Metcalf presenting the second issue paper which has been developed after substantive engagement with industry stakeholders, including producers and processors, both large and small, various peak industry councils, providers of OCM technology and other interested parties. This second issues paper precedes the final report, which will ultimately provide analysis and recommendations on whether investment in DEXA technology is a prudent operational and commercial decision for processes. Now let's hear from Andrew Metcalf. Thanks very much everyone for uh, coming along this morning and particularly for those who've come from uh, interstate, uh, I'm grateful uh, that you've, uh, you've done that. Um, our purpose here today uh, is to, uh, to, to launch the issues paper uh, that EY has been working on. Um, indeed, um, what I wanted to do today is to present to uh, the AMPC uh, the work that we've been doing. Uh, and of course, we're taking the opportunity of briefing our colleagues from the media because uh, these issues have got much uh, wider um, um, interest right across the media um, as well. Um, so our purpose uh, in, in coming here today is to present uh, our issues paper um, to you, our second issues paper um, that we are releasing publicly um, today um, um, and people will be able to find that on the AMPC website. So uh, just in terms of uh, talking about uh, uh, today, um, uh, you can work out who's who across the, uh, the livestock uh, uh, here. I, I suspect that's probably me, that one there. But, um, 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 I wanted to provide firstly some background uh, to the review and the work that we've been doing. Uh, secondly, uh, to talk a little bit about uh, EY and why we're involved. Uh, and then thirdly, of course, to formally launch the uh, uh, issues paper um, that uh, um, is in hard copy uh, like this and uh, there are copies in the room today uh, like this uh, but uh, um, is obviously available electronically and is going up on the AMP website this afternoon, um, I think. Um, so uh, um, I'll talk for 10 or 15 minutes and then very happy if there are any questions uh, um, at all uh, and then we'll uh, adjourn to uh, the, uh, the other part of the afternoon. EY has been asked to undertake an independent review um, of uh, the um, investment or the proposed investment um, of $150 million uh, to install DEXA units um, across um, around 90, 89 um, meat processing plants. Uh, DEXA, of course, I'm sure everyone's familiar, uh, stands for Dual Energy X-ray Azorpiometry. Um, there's been a, a lead up uh, to these issues. This whole issue of uh, objective carcass measurement has been around for quite a while, and I'll talk about that um, in a moment. But uh, just over the last uh, six months or so, uh, there have been some significant uh, developments. Um, the uh, ACCC um, um, initially released an interim report, uh, and then, of course, um, um, back in uh, uh, February, uh, um, launched a, a final a report, or I think it was early March, the final report from the ACCC came out. 
Um, there were announcements uh, uh, by uh, uh, MLA, Meat and Livestock Australia, back in November uh, that there should be a uh, installation of objective carcass measurement uh, right across the, uh, the industry, uh, funded by a $150 million uh, loan uh, and installed um, across 89 processing plants. Uh, and there were a whole range of reasons and, uh, and issues set out uh, in those proposals, and I'll talk about that uh, in a moment. Um, the um, um, Australian Meat Processors Corporation, as you well know, uh, and the Meat Industry Council um, appointed EY back in February um, to assist them to consider the proposal. Uh, and we've been asked to undertake an independent review um, of the uh, proposals, um, uh, one that's objective and facts-based, um, and to allow um, the AMPC and its members to consider uh, fully the, uh, the issues that have been uh, developed as a result um, of the uh, proposal. Uh, and along the way, we've presented a couple of uh, um, issues paper. But um, just before I turn to the next um, slide, which talks a bit about the red meat industry, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about why um, EY. EY, of course, uh, um, um, Ernst & Young, as it uh, um, used to be known, um, is a um, global professional services firm. Uh, we have well over 200,000 people working for us in virtually every country in the world. Um, I joined EY as a partner um, a little over three years ago, um, having had a long career prior to that um, in the Australian Government. Um, indeed, I was uh, uh, Secretary of the Department of Agriculture for a year, and prior to that, Secretary of the Department of, uh, uh, of Immigration for, uh, for many years, for about uh, eight years. Um, uh, earlier in my career, um, I was a Deputy Secretary in the Prime Minister's Department when John Howard was uh, Prime Minister, uh, and I was Philip Ruddock's Chief of Staff uh, back in the mid-90s. Um, so uh, um, um, EY has an extensive practice uh, in agribusiness uh, and we were asked to uh, by AMPC to come in and undertake uh, this review um, for them. Um, today is an important part of that review. Um, we're launching our second issues paper uh, which is very much designed to um, provide um, um, a stimulus for feedback uh, to the review. So what I'd like to do now is talk a little bit, a bit, a, a bit, sorry, a little bit more as to how we've got to where we are today, uh, and then we'll talk a bit more about the issues paper. Um, we were asked uh, to undertake this independent review um, of the, uh, the proposals uh, that have been made. Something that's very clear in this is that AMPC have asked us to act independently, objectively, uh, to gather evidence and facts, uh, and to present that uh, uh, back uh, to them, to enable them to make uh, prudent decisions about these issues. Um, so I just wanted to say right at the outset that we've been given complete editorial freedom uh, in the work we've been doing and the work that we present um, is our own work. This industry, uh, and I'm sure our colleagues from the rural media um, well and truly understand this, but I'm not sure if it's well understood in the wider Australian public. Uh, the Australian um, red meat industry has now become um, arguably our largest manufacturing industry in Australia. Um, converting livestock into food um, has uh, become a very large employer of Australians um, in rural, uh, regional and rural Australia. Um, it supports many um, uh, Australian towns um, and uh, regional districts. Um, it, uh, of course, is an industry that has us at heart livestock producers um, who have stewardship over a very large part of the Australian continent. Um, many of us have a family background or connection, uh, and I'm sure many people in the room have a family background or connection in this, uh, this extraordinary um, industry. Um, my own family connection goes back to the fact that my grandfather used to work for Sir Sidney Kidman um, as a drover back before World War I. He was also a professional boxer. He sounds like quite an interesting bloke, uh, my grandfather, um, uh, in one of those boxing tents that used to go around the countryside. Uh, but sadly, uh, World War I wasn't very good for him. Um, um, so this has become a very important industry. It's an industry, of course, that provides very high quality product um, to Australian consumers. But it's an industry that it exports about 70% of its product. So it's critically involved in the global uh, red meat uh, and protein um, commodity uh, trade. Um, it's an industry that uh, has at its heart um, tens of thousands um, of Australian producers, uh, cattle and sheep and goat producers. But it also is a, uh, uh, an industry that has at heart an industry of processors 
um, that involve um, um, uh, about 160 or so processing plants in Australia, many of which are accredited for export um, um, overseas. Some of those plants are operated by large multinational companies, um, others are operated by smaller companies um, um, based in only one or two uh, locations. So as I've said, I probably don't need to preach to the converted uh, about that, but I think uh, every opportunity I get, uh, I talk to people about how important this industry has become. And it's ultimately an industry, of course, and the processing part of the industry has several key uh, inputs. It obviously needs livestock, it uses energy, it needs people, um, and it needs technology. Uh, and technology uh, and the application of technology is what this particular proposal is about and what our review is focusing on. So what I wanted to do just briefly is to introduce to you how we have structured this particular um, issues paper because it does two or three things. Um, it's not uh, a simple page saying here are the things we're looking at. We did that in our first issues paper. What it does is three broad things. I thought it was very important as we progressed through the issues papers towards a final report uh, for AMPC and AMIC that we actually set out some context as to where this all fits. That we set out context uh, as to um, the structure, the value, uh, the significance uh, and the participants in the Australian uh, red meat uh, industry. We talk about the opportunities that exist and, you know, it's well known, uh, the opportunities, uh, you know, an expanding global population, um, the rise of the middle class uh, uh, in Asia, the very high quality uh, product, the, the clean, safe product that we can provide. But it's an also an industry, like all industry, that faces risks. Um, there are risks in many, many um, aspects and the document uh, talks about the sorts of challenge that the industry needs to, uh, to face uh, as it goes forward um, into the future and builds into its second secretary uh, of operation. The second thing that the issues paper does um, is to let people know what we've understood so far in the work that we've done. And I'll talk a little bit uh, more in a moment about uh, how we've gone about the work we've been doing. Um, we talk about uh, um, um, objective carcass measurement. Uh, we talk about the proposed applications of one particular technology of DEXA uh, as part of a solution uh, around objective carcass measurement. Uh, we um, look at the proposed rationale for the, um, the industry-wide rollout um, using socialised um, common funds rather than particular decisions being taken by individual processes. Um, we look at the proposed costs and financing uh, of the proposal. And another thing uh, that I think that uh, you'll all find interesting, and I'm sure our colleagues from the media will find interesting, is part five of the, uh, the paper, where we talk about what we're calling the voice of the industry. Um, we've spoken um, to peak bodies, but we've also spoken to some people who are actually operating at the, at the grassroots level um, as well. And it's been very interesting to hear what they're saying about these issues. So that takes us to the third part of the uh, objective of the issues paper, which is to tell people what we're considering. What are we looking at? What do we need more input from? Because as I've said, this whole independent review is transparent, it is consultative, and we're seeking to be as collaborative as we possible because the mandate we've been given by uh, the AMPC is to give them a report that allows them to make the best possible decision on these very important issues. So um, you'll see structured through the report those three broad areas. Um, some context, what we understand and where we're looking for uh, and where we're heading towards a final report. So we've spoken to a lot of people um, so far. Uh, we've spoken to um, the key industry bodies, to the Red Meat Advisory Council, to MLA, to AMPC, to Live Corp. We've spoken to the Cattle Council, Sheep Meat Council. Um, we've spoken to the uh, Processing uh, uh, Industry Council um, and so on. Uh, we've spoken, um, of course, uh, to academics and to independent experts, and there is a wealth of, um, of studies and work being done in this whole area of objective carcass uh, measurement. And we've been uh, um, the guest of uh, a couple of key people um, and are able to visit uh, a couple of sites to actually learn more about uh, the technology uh, in operation and how it's actually uh, being thought through and the technology is being developed and, uh, and researched. But the voice of the industry part, that section five of the report that I mentioned, um, also provides some direct voices as well. So not voices that have come through industry bodies, but direct voices that have come through some of Australia's major uh, 
producers, both in cattle and in sheep. Uh, and so while 17 is not a large number of producers, given there are tens of thousands, um, we certainly tried to identify some of the, the very big people, but we also went to some of the smaller people as well. And one of the ideas of this issues paper is to encourage more people, if they have views, uh, to come to us. Um, but uh, we're very confident that the market research techniques that we've used using market research professionals have allowed us to hear some of the key issues that people are thinking about um, across that producer sector. We've also spoken to 21 of the processes, so that's a significant number of the processes, including some of the very big ones. Not all, but some. Again, a sample to hear what people are thinking about issues. And so section five of our issues paper plays back some of the things that the industry players themselves, not the peak bodies, but the industry participants themselves are saying they want in relation to objective carcass measurement. Um, so uh, um, we have been busy, uh, but the whole purpose of this issue paper uh, is to let people know that we're still open to listening um, as we come to finalise the report. We've learnt a number of things so far, and again these are set out uh, in the paper. Um, we've learnt um, a lot about objective measurement uh, and objective carcass measurement, about carcass grading, about data collection, um, um, automation enablement, those being the primary applications um, of uh, objective measurement technology. Uh, we can see that there are multiple options around objective measurement. Um, there are multiple technologies, DEXA is one, and it's a very significant one, but there are other, other technologies uh, uh, being looked at uh, as well. Um, there's a, uh, a real issue about the commercial readiness of DEXA as a tool for beef uh, processing. Um, we know that DEXA as an objective measurement tool has been in research and development and trials for some time now, specifically in its uh, um, application to, leser, to measure lean meat yield, um, to enable carcass sortation uh, and to, uh, to enable advanced uh, robotics uh, uh, through the uh, automated boning processes. Um, we uh, understand that uh, there are still issues to be defined around data ownership and IP uh, rights. There are issues to further explore uh, around the total costs of ownership. Uh, were the proposal to be implemented, uh, which effectively means that uh, um, DEXA um, technology, DEXA boxes would be provided by the MLA, uh, owned by them, uh, and play a critical part in processes operations. There are all the other issues, of course, about the cost to operate them, um, the cost to ensure people are well trained, uh, change that would need to be made to their uh, processing arrangements. Uh, uh, and so there are both costs and benefits, uh, of course, with any proposal. Uh, and then uh, finally, uh, um, we've learnt uh, very significantly that the way that DEXA might be used will depend very much on the way the particular processor um, operates. Um, the processes are all quite different in their business models uh, and uh, ultimately their end consumers, uh, the critical players uh, in this particular uh, discussion. Ultimately it's the consumer about getting the right product um, to people um, in an industry that is internationally competitive, is having to compete uh, with major um, other nations uh, active in this area and compete with other protein sources, um, the use of DEXA and how ultimately that rolls up to consumers is uh, an important consideration as well. So that takes us to one point I did want to emphasise this morning, uh, both uh, Peter Noble, Peter Rizzo, in terms of what we've been hearing from the industry and for the media. And you'll see that we have a, um, um, a section at section five that actually provides some quotes and provides some analysis um, from what we've actually heard from those producers and processors we've spoken to. And broadly speaking, there are six main things that they've told us so far. They've told us that the industry is calling for pilot programs to demonstrate the technical and commercial aspects of EXA before any significant investment is made. In other words, People are looking for more information. They're looking for hard data. They're looking for trials that are actually empirically measured. Um, and they're looking uh, with interest at what's being done at the moment uh, in that regard. Secondly, until those trials have occurred, there's only moderate confidence uh, about the, uh, the benefits to the industry. Um, so people, I suppose the jury is still out, is a way to describe that. The third aspect is that uh, both producers and processors view major capital investment as a means to deliver their business model. Um, and so an investment option that is proposed to be homogenous across the whole industry is something that they'll need to study very carefully to see if it works for them. 
Now, for some it probably will, for others it may not. Um, and that's exactly the research that we've been commissioned by AMPC to help the AMPC board um, respond uh, to the proposals that uh, have been put out uh, into the industry. Um, we've heard some other things that are very clear, and again, this may not be news to anyone uh, in particular, but carcass grading and pricing is a clear source of frustration um, to uh, producers. Um, and frankly, and I'm sure this is not news to the processes, but this undermines their confidence in the processes. The mistrust in manual grading is too widespread to be ignored. Um, the industry needs to do something about the problem. And I know that it's doing that and has been for some time. In that regard, objective carcass measurement technologies are seen as a very valuable uh, and important tool uh, to increase this level of objectivity. Uh, the benefits that people see coming from OCM include accurate grading and valuation, um, uh, the uh, enablement of processes uh, to optimise their boning um, and uh, processing activities, uh, to enable producers to, to breed better um, um, animals uh, and to support uh, producers uh, uh, in their pursuit of a value-based marketing uh, approach. And finally, um, while uh, processes are concerned that DEXA technology will lead to producers pursuing yield over quality, the feedback we've had from producers is quite, quite reassuring. The feedback we've had strongly is that producers do understand uh, that there are a whole range of issues that uh, uh, need to be associated with the production of high quality meat. Um, the DEXA and OCM uh, will be one part of that, uh, but it will not in fact uh, mean that they uh, misdirect uh, their decisions about the sorts of animals they supply um, into the market. Producers do not believe that um, that uh, the use of DEXA technology would mean that they simply produce animals that are all meat and no fat. Um, that, um, that they understand that there are many other qualities associated with um, um, high quality um, edible uh, meat. Um, that uh, the meat and fat uh, um, variation is one aspect, but there are many other aspects that they need to focus on as well. So there's a sophistication that we're hearing uh, that simply employing this technology, which is about measuring one thing amongst a number of aspects that go to um, edible meat, uh, that this would not skew the way they work. Uh, but that's a, an issue, I suspect, that uh, the processes need to, uh, to, to focus on. There's a final point that I haven't put up on the presentation here, but I do ask you just to look at the second last page of our Wishes paper, where there's a strong desire from the producers and the processes we've spoken to for collaboration in the industry. Um, I think they recognise how important this industry is um, and that they believe that making decisions in a collaborative way across the industry on the basis of evidence and facts and trials and proof is something that they are looking for. Uh, and so uh, uh, they're interested in this, but they are looking for the key bodies, for the peak bodies um, to, to work together uh, on these issues. So there's some fascinating um, insights and some, uh, some pretty colourful quotes uh, as well uh, in that part. Uh, finally, um, uh, where to from here? Um, this uh, issues paper is very much seeking feedback from the industry um, and uh, of course uh, AMPC um, and other industry bodies um, are very much part of that feedback process. But uh, we've been asked to provide an independent report and so we're looking for continuing feedback and input from the industry um, as a whole. We're asking questions like, how may the proposed application of DEXA meet the needs of the industry? We're asking questions about the costs associated with the implementation of DEXA, um, both uh, its implementation and its ongoing operations uh, and the proposed funding arrangements. We're asking questions about the commercial, contractual and financial considerations relating to data ownership uh, and its use and its governance. Uh, and we're also asking about the benefits uh, that there be uh, for the industry and uh, how they may be um, pursued uh, and adopted. So in other words, we're seeking industry feedback um, on the issues paper. Uh, and as you know, we are planning a final report to you, to AMPC um, later uh, this month. Um, so today is about launching an issues paper and seeking feedback. I'm delighted that uh, we have representatives of media here today who can, uh, can amplify this call beyond this room and take it out to the broader um, industry. Uh, we are on a tight timetable. Um, people are anxious uh, to hear what we have to say. So we are asking for any further contributions by the 12th of May. 
uh, and we'll be providing a final report to AMPC and to uh, AMIC um, towards the end of, uh, of May. Um, that's the presentation, uh, folks. Thanks very much. I'm very happy to take any questions uh, and, of course, we can then get into less formal discussions um, over, uh, over, over lunch. But, so. Colin? What's so. the actual time on? Or what do you want? Uh, end of May um, is when I expect to have a final report, or when Peter has told me I have to have a final report. So, yeah, so, so we, we, um, we know that there's um, some, um, not frustration, but I, you know, I, I read the media like anyone else, and you, you, you folks write it, um, um, that the people are saying that these are important issues we need to move on. Uh, so we'll be giving a report that hopefully will inform um, um, considered judgments about what's a very major and significant issue. So. So you want to the 12th of May would be great. Um, if there's a reason that someone can't because they're out of the country, they're on holidays or whatever, just let us know. So there's a, there's a dedicated email contact point there um, to, uh, to get in contact with us. So, so, so. Any other questions um, or issues, John? You, so, yeah. I think uh, congratulations on getting your head around a, a, an incredibly complex topic in what's been a very short period of time. And, you know, I'm very impressed with, the, with where you've uh, we've got to over that short time. Uh, could you could you cast any scrutiny beyond DEXA into the some of the broader issues in terms of some of the met quality uh, uh, evaluations on an objective basis? Because it appears at this point all of the emphasis is on DEXA yeah. on your side. Yeah. Uh, but, I, I heard a presentation from um, Peter McGilchrist recently, in the last couple of weeks, where it's evident that some of the objective measurements of quality parameters is yep. still a long way off. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, are we putting the cart before the horse by jumping onto this yield band wagon yep. and pursuing this at the, without having the full picture? <laughs> Well, I suspect uh, I can answer a bit of that, and I suspect that the man next to you could answer a bit more um, as well, uh, because uh, you know, IMPC will have a, have a view. Uh, but two things. Firstly, um, as I've said earlier, um, it's clear there are other technologies, uh, but you know, there's, there's a, clearly a focus on DEXA, and you know, and I know it's now being uh, being looked at uh, by one of the major processors, and they recently had a field day um, associated with it. But something else that we presented in the report that's quite interesting, if you look at around page 26 um, or so, you'll notice that we've set out some information about the ALM Tech uh, project. Now, the ALM Tech project was uh, established last year. Um, it was established under the Commonwealth Government's uh, Research and Development uh, Rural uh, um, R&D for Profit uh, scheme. And the whole program was to enable beef, sheep and pig farmers to have access to more accurate descriptions of key attributes that influence the value of their livestock, including carcass lean meat yield, eating quality and compliance to market specs. So that was set up last year. And if you turn over to page uh, 26 uh, and uh, 27, you'll see that, as you'd expect, uh, ALM Tech, which is, uh, I think, a joint uh, body between MLA and uh, AMPC. And, uh, and the department. Uh, and we set out the governance structure for it uh, there. Uh, they've set up a, a work program. Uh, there are a number of... Uh, of streams, um, development of lean meat yield technology, uh, development of eating quality technology, um, development of robotic technology, uh, industry databases and data decision systems. So there is clearly some impressive work that's underway and you'll see that there are a range of target dates um, around these. Uh, for lean meat uh, technology, for example, we're talking about target dates uh, into 2018, 2019, 2020. Um, and so one of the aspects of our report will be um, you know, advice back to AMPC is, well, do you already have the measures in place and the mechanisms in place to actually advance these issues that were, that were sort of described in the proposal? Um, and given the clear need um, that we're hearing about, um, that people are looking for uh, um, um, research, evidence, data, trials, does this in fact represent a good way forward? Um, so, uh, so there's work being done on those issues. Let's uh, break for lunch uh, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So, but thank you again for coming along. So. That was Andrew Metcalf from EY giving a presentation on the second issues paper. AMPC encourages all members of our industry to have their say. So please get in touch with the team at EY or visit our website at ampc.com.au for more information.